I, I could talk for hours about saucisson, fromage, a good baguette, a petit coucou au français, a little hello to French people. Hello, my, uh, sorry. Hello, my name is Antoine Landrevy. I'm an uh, art director on Industries of Titan. I'm also the voxel artist for that game. And today we're going to talk about the art direction and the art process in general. So before joining Industries of Titan, uh, I was a voxel artist uh, on my free time only. I posted my first picture on Twitter. I got like five likes and I was like, whoa, that's successful. So the next weekend I did one more and I got 10 likes. So I kept going and going and went from 100 followers to 40,000 followers in like a few years. And uh, after a while of doing voxel art, Ryan Clark, the founder of Brace Yourself Games, found me on Twitter and proposed me to do a few concept arts for that next project he had. And it became Industries of Titan. And in the end, I joined full time to be a lead artist and then art director on the game. We wanted to do something that was sci fi and industrial. One of my favorite themes is cyberpunk, so there's a lot of influence in the industries of Titan uh, with movies like uh, Blade Runner, of course, which is my favorite movie ever. What I like too, in terms of visual in Blade Runner, is the um, work on light and contrast. You could have like very dark scenes with a bright red somewhere just to point out the subject. I like how the world is gritty, so it's still sci-fi, but you feel that uh, it could be ours someday. I don't want to say that Titan is completely cyberpunk. It's more like cyber industrial. But for sure, there's a lot of influences from uh, cyberpunk in general. So when we started Industries of Titan, I had to jump into uh, development super quickly. When we need a new building, I just jump right into it. I don't do a lot of research. Uh, it's mostly based on the vision I have of the world. When we had a little downtime, I, I was able to produce uh, some kind of creative direction documents so that I could convey my vision better to my colleagues and my team. In that document, there's a lot of keywords, a lot of pictures and GIFs about uh, movies, games that are references. You could have, for example, a GIF of the bikes from Akira running into the city with the trail lights. And next to it, you'll have a video of the movie Metropolis, which is almost 80 years before Akira. They don't all have the same level, like uh, cyberpunk is way stronger, but I also want to put some touch of art deco and brutalism, especially because the game is voxel art, so it's pretty cubic and brutalism is good for that. And since we don't have any texturing on uh, voxel models, uh, that was a good way to, uh, to make something look cool without too many details. So once we had a little bit of what we wanted on paper and uh, with a few buildings, we knew that uh, for city builder we needed characters and population. So what we did is use a low poly for uh, everything that is um, natural. And in the end, we have everything that is man-made, like buildings or voxel art, and everything that is natural is low poly, which is in the end interesting because you arrive on Titan, you're bringing your voxel art buildings in a world of low poly. The, the contrast between the two is interesting and you see one mixing with the other. We are avoiding every round shapes. That's also why there's no real nature, like no tree, no plants, nothing like that in our game. And also that allows us to stay as grid aligned as possible with our isometric view, plus that grid, plus the voxel art, the low poly, and the texturing that is almost pixel art texturing. That makes everything looks cohesive and it's uh, nicer to look at, I think. Recently, one of the assets I was working on was making battleships. Uh, our game designer starts with a spreadsheet where he uh, creates uh, layouts for every interiors of every ship. So it's just um, tiles and uh, squares, uh, and he, he makes an interesting shape based on the level of the ship. Like we have a level one that is small and can go fast, level two, level three, the level three is bigger and has more uh, life points. 
And then I start from that and I have to make a ship around it. So I have to do the exterior version of the ship. And then I cut it in the middle uh, so that I can carve the rooms inside. Because when you build a ship in the game, you first build the hull and then you build every devices that you want inside of your ship and then you can go into battle with it. Creating designs of spaceships with so many constraints can seem hard, but on the contrary, I really like it. The more constraints I have, uh, the more imaginative I am. They force you to, to go somewhere, uh, whereas when you have total freedom, you can work for hours in a direction that goes nowhere. So what I'm excited about is um, we've been doing a lot of assets for two years and a half now and we didn't show a lot so I can't wait for people to discover everything that we created and I also can't wait to see them play. Every time we've been to PAX or GDC we've seen players play completely differently. I'm also a little bit scared because it's my first video game ever. Uh, so I'm excited to release something that I worked on, but I'm also scared of how people are going to react. Uh, are they going to like it or not? Uh, we'll see, but uh, I'm pretty confident because the team, they did a really good job. So yeah, be a little bit more patient and uh, look forward for the early access launch. We can't wait for you to play the game. Or if you have a favorite like French word or something. Yeah, but it, they're all insults. <laughs> <laughs> or let's do it again, but all in French. Okay. Bonjour, je m'appelle Antoine Landrevy. Je suis le directeur artistique sur Industry of Titan, ou les industries de Titan. Et euh, on va parler de direction artistique aujourd'hui. That's it. <laughs> yeah, and then next uh, scene. Okay, good. <laughs>